Hey, hey, and welcome to another episode of Work Smarter, Not Harder with me, Tony Harmer. And in this episode, we're going to look at making a not work motif like this one here. This is sort of a triquetra design, so a triangle based design, that sort of pseudo uh, Celtic thing that you see in many, many places. And you can really build out some beautiful ornate stuff with this, uh, but this principle and technique that I'm going to show you will work for all of those. This one's nice and simple and easy to do. So let's get started. I'm going to create a new Illustrator document. I'm going to choose the Art and Illustration profile just there, and 96560 is just fine for this. It really doesn't matter at what size it is at all. So I'll hit OK just there and the first thing I'm going to do is tap L on my keyboard and draw an ellipse like so uh, because I'm all old school like that if you are working on a touch enabled device or you're working with a Wacom tablet you might consider doing that with the shaper tool and for example drawing an ellipse uh, like so but for now I'll just stick with what I've got here so I want to cancel the fill that's on there first of all. If I look across at the toolbox on the left, you can see uh, that the fill is in front and uh, is set to white. So I'm just going to hit the slash key there to remove that. And then I'm going to dial up the weight of the stroke just here. So I've just clicked inside this stroke box there and just bringing that up to what I want, which is around about 10 or 11 points. I think that's fine. I'm just going to hit return just to apply that value and pop back out to here and hold down the alt key now and drag a copy of this across now the smart guides are showing me that that's aligned but of course if you might be more comfortable maybe if you hold down the shift key as well you can do whichever uh, suits you but you want a decent amount of overlap like so let me just scroll up a bit there so you can see all of what I've done I'm then going to select uh, one of these again and alt drag a copy down here and I want sort of more or less the same amount of overlap. And I should get that if the center of the circle kind of is around about aligned with the bottom of those strokes just there. There are very scientific, precise ways to do this. It's just I'm not doing them today. So I've selected all three things there. OK, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the horizontal distribute centers. OK, there to align those things together all right and once I've done that I'm actually going to switch to the shape builder tool just here so I'm going to hold down shift and tap M to get the shape builder then putting my finger down on the alt key I'm just going to drag across that shape and remove it drag across this one and remove it drag across this one and remove it so you can see I've already got basically the triquetra just there I'm going to tap L to draw a new ellipse, so kind of from the center of this one here, just draw that out so that those peaks are kind of poking out there and just nudge that to get the spacing more or less uh, correct. And I think that's just fine uh, where it is for now. So once I've done that, I've got all of these things with their stroke on. I'm going to select those and then outline the stroke. So I'm going to hold down uh, command alt and tap O that's alt control if you're on the PC and then they get outlined like so or if you've got the leisure of plenty of time you could always go up to the object menu make your way down to path and then choose outline stroke from there of course you might have to do that but otherwise uh, then it makes more sense to kind of not do that and use shortcuts wherever possible. So I'm going to use another one now. I'm going to tap D to set these to the default just there. And then I'm going to click and dial those up. So I'm clicking in that box again just there, bringing those up to about half of the weight I had before. I'm just going to see if there's any benefit from putting the stroke to the outside. Maybe, maybe not. No, actually, I'll leave it uh, at its default there in the middle. Once I've done that, I need to outline those strokes again. So Alt Command O just to change that over like so. So just have a quick look at that. I'm just going to zoom in, make sure that everything's outlined. Groovy. That is perfect. So zoom out a little bit and go to that. Once I've done that, I'm going to change this now into a live paint group. Alt Command X is the fast way to do that. Alt Control X on the PC 
And in the menu system, it's in object, live paint, make, just there like so. Now all I need to do is to tap K on my keyboard, which gets me the live paint bucket. And then all of the action here is between the left and right arrow keys on my keyboard. And that's just a switch between black and white there. What I'm seeing is the items inside of the first line of the swatches panel, but I only want these two at the moment. So I'm going to start off with black and then come up to some of these regions just here. So we'll start here, we'll go over first of all. So if we go over there by just dragging across those to do that, I'm going to hit the left arrow to bring white to the center and then just drag down across that. So very easy. So that was over and then under. So over again, just there, which means I now need to tap the right arrow key and just complete that little bit there. So over, under, over, under. That means this one goes over. So I'll do the black bits first because that's already selected. And I'll switch to white, correct the mistake I made just there, drag across there. So that's over, which means this one's under. But this is so quick that it's really easy to kind of work like this. It doesn't matter if you make the odd mistake, you can clean it up real quick. And you can see I just completed that over there. So over, under, over, under. That looks right to me now. So that's going under, which means this one needs to go over. So I'll just complete that bit just there. And then just come along like so and color those bits up. So over, under, over, under. I think that's about right. I think I'm just about there, I reckon that those should be really simple. There should only be three intersections there and they should all go over. Helps if you have a piece of visual reference, of course, and you might need that uh, for yours. Now I'm going to move along, so I'm just going to tap the right arrow key to cycle along there. Although, of course, if I wanted to, I could just come along, open the swatches panel and get the colour I'm after too. And I'll just click in these regions just here to colour these up. I think that will look kind of nice. Now that's done, what I'm going to do is expand the live paint. Now that it doesn't have a shortcut, it's in the objects menu, live paint and expand. But because I don't like going to menus, I built myself a button mode action uh, to just do that in one go. So there you go, now that's all expanded like so. And now I can just work on this just to optimize it. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm gonna get my direct selection tool and I'm gonna click I clicked away to start off to deselect things. I'm going to click on the kind of black areas just here. So if I get that, and then I'm going to select the same fill color, which I could do by going to the select menu and choosing um, same and fill color. You can also use this button here sometimes if you've got that set up for fill color, but mine's set for all. So I'll just use my little button action here to select the same fill color. And then this is where I would use the shape modes there to unite those things to being one shape. I'll do the same thing with white. So I'll select the same fill color there and unite all of those things. And then I'll select the red here. Again, select the same fill color and unite all of those things as well. So there you go. That just optimizes what I've done there. And I could further optimize those. Some of those things have created quite a lot of points. Astute graphics make an awesome tool called the Smart Remove Brush. And I'll just show you, actually, if I use that over here to kind of complete uh, this work. So here's my Smart Remove Brush tool in my Astute tools just here. Watch what happens if I just brush over that. You can see with just a few strokes, it removes all of that stuff. The precision of the geometry is preserved. It really is a wonderful tool. And if you buy nothing else uh, from Astute, of course you should, because they make great, great kit then definitely uh, pick up that one because it just makes your life so much easier. So let's fit that now. So that's really, really good, I think, uh, just there. I want to add a little bit more to it. So you'll see that in my original design just here, I've kind of got these set out nicely, almost like a patch. So what I'm going to do is I've got a group. So I'm going to add a new fill to that group, hold down the command key, hit the slash key, that adds you this new fill, like so. I'm gonna change the fill color just there, so I'll use this sort of light brown color. And then I'm going to apply an effect to it and offset that a little bit. So let's just do offset path just there. I'll bring that down to maybe 
uh, about two millimeters there. I think that's kind of a good thing. I'm going to change the mitering to rounded. I kind of like that it rounds that off there and hit OK. So I've got that, but what I need to do is move that underneath the content group. So in my appearance panel, there's that fill with its little offset path effect, and I'll drag that down underneath the content. So now I've got that there. Then I'm going to create a little dark key line around that. So I'm going to target this fill inside the appearance panel, and I'm going to hit this duplicate selected item button just there. And now this one, I'm going to change to a darker color. So I'll go for this very, very dark brown there. I'll click on the offset path effect that's associated with this fill. Let's turn on preview so you can see what I'm doing. And maybe dial that up by, I don't know, two or three millimeters just there, just to see how that looks. I think that looks great at three. I might just dial that by a decimal, 3.5. There you go, happy with that. And there you go, that's it. That's how you can draw uh, a triquetra Celtic motif like this one, a bit of knot work. And of course, like I said, you could apply that to all sorts of other things as well and draw bigger, uh, better designs. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Reach out to me via Twitter. Follow my Facebook page. You can pause the movie in a second uh, to get those details and visit my blog and keep on watching. So that's it for now. We're done. And so until next time, see ya.